Welcome to Bible Study today. We're going to be talking about a very interesting topic. What does the Bible say about the last days? We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter number 24, where Jesus walked out of the temple with his disciples. And the temple, just an unbelievable white marble. Uh, the sun would come up and, and shine on that white marble, and it would just literally literally uh, glow. It was just one of the uh, marvels, really, of that time. Little did they know that shortly after it was completed in AD, AD 64, that it would be destroyed in AD 70 by General Titus uh, from the Roman army, and not one stone was left upon another, just like Jesus testified uh, and prophesied was going to happen. So I just wanted to lay a little bit of groundwork uh, before we read what's called the Olivet uh, Discourse here. Of course, Jesus was referring to some things that were going to happen with the Jews and then also some things in the last days. There's a little bit of controversy even, even among good men uh, that debate about the meaning of this scripture, how much of it um, is for the Jews and how much of it is for the end times. So we're not going to get into that. Obviously, uh, it is for the Jews. Obviously, it is for the end times as well. And so I'll leave that to the debaters. But we're going to look at it here in Matthew 24, verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. This is the last time that Jesus would enter or leave the temple. And here he is with his disciples and and he, he, they showed him the buildings of the temple. And just, again, it was just uh, a marvel of the day. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say unto you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Wow, think about that. Jesus talked about the literal temple here. He talked about the physical temple uh, when he said, destroy this temple in three days, it'll rise up again. And they thought, of course, that he was talking about this magnific magnificent uh, piece of architecture that was being built. Um, here he is talking about the piece of architecture that's being built. And he said, he prophesied that not one stone, I mean, it's hard to believe that, especially when some of these stones are estimated to be 40 feet long, one stone of marble, how could this possibly be crushed like Jesus was talking about? And nonetheless, he said, Assuredly, I say unto you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. And we know General Titus uh, did just that in AD 70. And look at this here now. He's on uh, the Mount of Olives. He's overlooking this beautiful temple and he sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places or diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So Jesus gives a list here of, thing, of things that were going to be happening at the end of times. And we stopped at verse 8, and there's other things that we could talk about. But for this lesson, I'm just going to limit it to the first eight verses. There's some things that Jesus says are going to be characteristic of the last days. The first thing I want to talk about is spiritual deception in the end times, there's going to be a lot of spiritual deception, and we've seen it uh, really throughout history. Uh, from the time Jesus walked on this earth, even before that, there's just been so many uh, false uh, doctrines, so many false religions. I, I think it's one of the 
most famous or infamous was Jim Jones in the early 80s. He took these people to Guyana and, and of course, uh, they sold everything. And many of these people, just well-to-do people, well-educated people. And, of course, he led them to the jungles. And, of course, as the authorities were moving in, uh, they drank that cyanide lace Kool-Aid and found so many people dead, uh, women, children, men. It was just, it was just terrible. I was in high school when that happened. And of course, hence the, the cliche, drink the Kool-Aid, uh, became a famous, famous, uh, saying because of what Jim Jones, uh, did. The people drank the Kool-Aid, the cyanide lace, cyanide lace Kool-Aid, and they were all tragically killed and commit, committed suicide and, and and many murder, I'm sure, were murdered, didn't willingly drink of the of the Kool Aid. But anyways, it's just one example of many, many over the time. Of course, even Charles Manson said he was Jesus Christ, got a group of followers to follow him and and they slaughtered some people and and, and again we could go on and on throughout history. But Jesus warned about the spiritual deception of the last days. Matthew twenty four again Verses 4 and 5, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, or, or that means beware, that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And unfortunately, this is true. The devil, he's known as the deceiver. That's one of his titles, literally one of his titles. And so we know there's going to be a lot of deception, a lot of spiritual deception. And unfortunately, this includes the church, there's a lot of uh, heresy in the church. Uh, Paul warned Timothy about this, and a young pastor in First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he said, Now the Spirit expressly says <clears throat> that in the last times, uh, the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Now listen to this, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils or demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. There's a lot of religions that forbid people to marry and commanding to abstain from meats and foods. Some religions command that, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So there's different varying degrees of, of heresy, things that are just taught contrary uh, to the word of God. And of course, unfortunately, we know there's a lot of churches now that don't even believe in hell. As a matter of fact, George Barna, a Christian research company, said up to half of churchgoers, up to half of people uh, believe that the devil is not real, that he's only symbolic of evil. Most people do believe in heaven, according to Barna, but up to two-thirds of people do not believe in hell, even though the Bible expressly teaches about a place uh, created for the devil and his angels that has literal fire. We see that in Luke chapter number 15, uh, 16 with the rich man and Lazarus. Some, some of course, uh, even what they would we would call churches, uh, deny even the virgin birth. They deny... Uh, the deity of Christ, the sinless life of Christ. They deny the inspiration of the Bible. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people today that are moving away from a doctrine of the Word of God and are clinging to what we call as this, this wealth and health uh, gospel. I see commercials on TV where a particular uh, so-called preacher will get people to mail money in or send money in and he will he will give them a little bit of uh, miracle water to heal them of whatever disease that they have or maybe some kind of a blessed hanky i'm not i'm not not making fun i'm just saying it's just so sad how people will mail in the money and people will do these things uh that are not taught uh in the bible and so the, john warns us in first john to try the spirits, you know, there's this a big uh, uh, popularity today, even among what we might call churches of the spirit world. And, you know, um, the spirit world is not to be messed with. There are good spirits, of course, and there are demons uh, from hell. 
In First John, John uh, warns us, he said, try the spirits to see whether or not they are of God. The Bible warns us that even the devil can transform himself into a spirit of light, an angel of light. So there's not a spiritual deception. There's going to be a heresy in the church. There's going to be a, bl a blurring of the truth. Um, you know, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? And today people are denying, uh, truth. Um, John chapter eight, verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Wow. The truth of the scripture. What is truth? Well, Jesus answered it in another scripture in John 14, six. I am the way, the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth is the word of God. And we know that Jesus is the word. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Wonderful scripture. John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Unfortunately, again, we have the spiritual deception uh, people today, even churches, are getting away from the truth. And boy, that's that's sad. Um, truth, I'm for tearing down walls, by the way. And I think in this day and age, uh, just racism and, and, and legalism, uh, false doctrine, different things. Uh, there's so many things out there that are bad. And, and boy, there are some walls that the church needs to, to tear down as far as racism and as far as legalism, things like that, where we do need to come together. But where we need to draw the line is false doctrine and things that are not the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Jesus is the truth. So where, where do we get our truth? Well, not from opinions. Um, you know, we get the truth from, from the truth, Jesus Christ, from the word of God. And then, of course, again, the devil, he blurs the lines of what is uh, truth. And we see it today in our society uh, that what is a man, what is a woman? And wow, and we see a lot of opinions on what is a man. I mean, they'll even ask people during congressional hearings, what is a woman? They won't even answer the question. You know, it's just it's just. It's just crazy, and I could go on and on about it, and so could you. Uh, but anyways, the last days are going to be uh, characterized by spiritual deception. The lines are going to be blurred, uh, even within the church and, of course, outside of the church especially. Another thing of the last, another trait of the last days is a moral and cultural uh, disruption. A moral and cultural disruption, and we see that uh, all around us, especially over the last 30 years. Uh, this world has crashed as far as moral and cultural uh, dilemmas or disruption. Uh, again, Paul warned Timothy in a different scripture, Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, Perilous times will come. Now, I want you to look at, we're not going to take time to, to talk about each one of these individually too much, but here's some characteristics of the moral and cultural decline uh, that's going to be so characteristic of the last day. And Paul says, men will be lovers of themselves. And wow, what, a, what an attribute of the last days. Men will be lovers of their own selves. And we see that so much in society today where people care pretty much just about me, myself, and I, lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Wow, we're living in the end times again, the Laodicean church, uh, the last church age where Jesus warns in the book of Revelation, you're rich and increased with goods, and you say you have need of nothing. But Jesus said, don't you know that you're poor and wretched and blind, and you're in pitiful shape? And so we're living in this day, especially in America, of material wealth. But Paul warns Timothy that men in the last days are going to be, uh, and men that's talking about mankind, not necessarily males. It's going to be men and women 
They're going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, and again, pride, proud, blasphemers. And boy, there's just a lot of that uh, going on today. Uh, just shaking their fist in God's face, just blaspheming God himself, blaspheming God's principles especially. Uh, how about this one? Disobedient uh, to parents. And wow, we see so much disobedience uh, today. And before we point the fingers at everybody else, remember there's three more pointing back at us, at, at back, pointing back at us. And uh, by nature, we are all uh, disobedient, but disobedience is going to be a major trait of the last days. It says unthankful. Man, we could talk about that even within the church. Uh, we, we're not thankful anymore, even though God commands us to be thankful. And so uh, unholy, need I say anything about that? We are living in a very, very unholy society, unloving very unloving, so many murders, so many terrible, terrible things going on. Even in the church, God says if we even talk evil, and we can murder people with this tongue right here. James 3 says it's a fire, and that it's been set on fire of hell, this tongue. But unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good and wow. If that, that's a huge one right there, despisers of good. Jesus says that if we live godly in Christ Jesus, we shall, not might, but we shall suffer persecution. Why? Because there are so many despisers of good. And then it says traitors, headstrong, haughty. And how about this last one? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. We're living in such a society uh, that's filled with just pleasing ourselves rather than pleasing God. And so we have this spiritual deception in the last days, according to uh, Matthew 24. We have the moral and cultural uh, disruption that's going on, uh, according uh, to Matthew 24. Then we have this nat national disruption, that's going to be happening. Let's look at it again in Matthew 24, verse 6. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We've seen this throughout history, especially the First World War that happened and then, of course, the Second World War that happened and supposedly the war to end all wars. And, of course, the United Nations was formed. Israel was formed, which is huge, which is another topic all in itself. 1948, Israel was established. What a miracle in Bible uh, prophecy. And then, of course, now we have all these organizations that are supposed to keep us from war, uh, namely the United Nations. Um, but anyways, there's still wars and rumors of wars. And we see it in the Middle East. We see it in Africa and Sudan right now. There's a war. We had to go in there and rescue our, our people that are over in Sudan. We see it, of course, in Ukraine. All kind of wars going on, war going on there. And then, of course, North Korea, they continue to to uh to shoot these missiles and and test these missiles and then of course the sa saber rattling from Putin over in Russia making all kinds of threats uh, against the west and against NATO and then of course you have China over there and all the threats that they're making about Taiwan all the things that are going on in the south china sea i see in the newspaper just today that another oil tanker was captured off the coast of Iran. And uh, they have two of them now that they captured. And, and wow, every time you turn around, wars and rumors of wars. Once again, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. 
And you know what? That's going to be a characteristic of the last days. And boy, we see it all around us. And then finally, I'm going to mention the physical destruction that Jesus talks and warns about in Matthew 24. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And listen to this now. The things that he mentions specifically, there'll be famines. And you know, we don't understand this as much as Americans. You know, we saw just a, a, t a taste of it when COVID-19 happened. And do you remember the run on food and the empty shelves? And it made us a little bit nervous or a whole lot nervous. Could you imagine living like that every day, like people do in the world? I just went on the internet today and looked up some statistics. 828 million 828 million are dealing with severe hunger in this world. That's almost a billion people dealing with severe hunger every day. Can you imagine that? We don't even understand it in America. We've been so spoiled. There are another 2.3 billion people that face the less extreme but still dangerous levels of food insecurity. Hey folks, that's 29%, almost 30%, almost a third of the world's population deal with hunger issues in some form or fashion. And Jesus warned there's going to be famines, there's going to be pestilences. And we've seen the different things, the SARS, we've seen the AIDS epidemic, bird flu, we just went through COVID-19. And scientists warn us that there's even worse things out there in these different chemical laboratories, these pestilences. And boy, I don't even like to think about it. And I'm sure you don't either. But Jesus warns us that in the last days, there's going to be famines. There's going to be pestilences. And here's this, earthquakes in diverse or various places. I'm going to read you a NBC News thing, it's a report. It says the annual number of what we call great earthquakes nearly tripled over the last decade. Now, man, many of these articles blame global uh, warning, warming, uh, so it's called. But we know there's a different reason why these earthquakes are happening. Jesus said there's going to be more and more earthquakes in diverse or various places. The annual number of great earthquakes nearly tripled over the last decade, providing a reminder to Americans that unruptured faults like the one in the Northwest United States might be due for what they call a big one. Listen to this, 18 earthquakes with a magnitude of eight or more uh, rattled zones around the globe. That's an increase of 265% over the average rate the previous century. So these Earthquakes are increasing in size and uh, in number and in magnitude. And Jesus said in the last days, there's going to be famine, there's going to be pestilences, there's going to be earthquakes in various places. And verse number eight, we're going to stop with that today. It says, all these are just the beginning of sorrows. And then when we get farther down in Matthew 24, we get to the verse number 15. Um, Jesus mentions the abomination of desolation that's mentioned in Daniel. And of course, that's when the actual tribulation is going to take place. And it's going to be terrible, terrible things. And we read about those seals and different things that are broken and all the different things are going to happen to this earth as God shows Israel the signs similar to the ten plagues in Egypt again, to get the attention of his children. And so let me just share this with you. The last days are here. I believe that with all my heart. Well, preacher, people have been saying that for centuries. I do understand. But you know, at no time in our history have things lined up with Bible prophecy uh, like they do today. And what should be the purpose purpose of Bible prophecy? Well, hopefully it's to draw us closer to Christ. Hopefully it's to cause us to be become more obedient to Christ. Wouldn't it be a shame if we just bought uh, books as Christians and traveled all over the country as Christians 
uh, just out of curiosity sake. And you know, none of it changed our lives. And wouldn't that be terrible just to study and, and eat all this up just to be curious, but not to have it uh, change our lives. And so hopefully what you heard today, and this is just, just a, that much of it, hopefully it piqued your interest and hopefully it'll help us to understand, wow, you know, we don't want to be walking through this life uh, just like a robot. We want to look around. Jesus says, watch and pray. You know, Jesus said, look up. And when you see these things, look up because your redemption draws nigh. And Jesus said in another scripture that the Son of Man is going to come back at a time when you think not. And we always make jokes about that passage, but really it's no joke. And what's Jesus talking about? Well, it's just talking about the deception of Satan. And we're going through life like robots. And we don't even realize what's going on around us. So realize, hey, you know what? The devil's real. There's all kinds of deception going on. There's all kinds of terrible things happening in our world even now. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes, things. But Jesus said these are, these are only the beginning of sorrows. Hey, let me ask you. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Have you ever been born again? If not, open up your Bible. Uh, read the book of Romans. What a wonderful book. Read John uh, chapter number uh, three. What a powerful uh, passage of scripture it is there. And so email me, uh, lbcleehighton.org. Uh, email me and I'd be happy to tell you about being born again about knowing the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. Hey, are you a Christian? Well, guess what? We should be looking up. We should be ready. Because guess what? The trump of God is going to sound at any time. Jesus is going to appear. And God willing, we'll talk about the second coming uh, next week. Hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful May. I can't believe it's May already. And I hope to see you Sunday, whether it's in person or online. God bless.